Yeah, Stu, look, big game today. A massive one for you to uh, do the commentary on as well. And, yeah. Uh, look, Liverpool ended up kind of crawling back a little bit in and amongst it. And top four is definitely something they can, that, that they're going to be looking at. But how do you see this one going today, Stu? Um, I'll tell you what, a lot of these games that, that we're coming into now in the Premier League are a little bit of unknowns for me. You know, it's like the first day of a new season. You don't know what the sort of off-season period's been like for those uh, clubs that have had a players that have not been uh, away internationally. Some yeah. would have had a, a really good period. And uh, I think we start almost starting again, you know. So I think form goes out the window a little bit. Uh, I, I can't see Liverpool winning this, to be honest with you. I can see it being a draw, but I can't see Liverpool winning it. I think it'd be a tough game for them. Mm. And I think, uh, you know, Villa finished, probably finished the season, uh, the, the first half of the season, quite strongly, new manager coming in. And, and I think mm. he'd have had time to work with them. So good for him. Do you think, Stuart, that, I mean, you're saying you don't think Liverpool will win it, but do you think that, are Liverpool still a bit too easy to play against? Because obviously their numbers and their stats in the early part of the season are nowhere near what they were last year, as in the amount of, obviously the, the ground they covered and the pressing's not quite as good. Do you think that's the issue, Stuart? Um, I just think they've been a little bit too loose defensively, to be fair. Uh, mm. that, that's That's been a big one for me. Now, whether that, that stems from, you know, the press from the front and... and but but teams are finding it easy to play easier, let's say, to play through them. And obviously, there's there's been some sort of critical mistake by their defenders as well, which has been costly to them. But, but I think that's the, that's the main thing. You know, when they're in their pomp cast, they put you mm. on the back foot and they pen you in and you can't yeah. get out. Now you're finding that you can on the counter-attack a little bit. And I think it all stems from sort of this high line that they were were sort of enforcing that, that mm. ala- enabled teams to, if they made their runs correctly, to get in behind them. Mm. I was uh, talking to Natalie on the weekend sports breakfast, Stuart, and I was talking about Nunes as a goal scorer. And I said, look, <laughs> when you're at a very big football club, and I found this out for myself, is that you know the standard is that you've got to be very clinical. And I said, look, he's a young emerging player and he's got loads of great attributes to his game, but he has to become more clinical for Liverpool. Yeah, he will. I, I think I find it really tough on on some of these players that, that that come to play in England. There's an expectation straight away that they've got to deliver, you know. And I think that's mm. really tough on on any individual, to be honest. We, I think he'll be a very very good player in the Premier League, a, a lot better than we're seeing at the moment. There's no doubt about that. I think there's a few question marks about him at present in certain quarters. I I think. You know, he he might need this season to settle in a little bit, but he's certainly got all the attributes to be a top scorer. But and and you know, you know, scorers are like mm. a bit of confidence comes their way and they the back back of the net a little bit more readily. You know, mm. yeah. Uh, Stuart reports this morning that Klopp is going on the offensive to get Jude Bellingham, who who was amazing in the World Cup, and what a talent yeah. he is. Uh, do you think they need to get him to to compete with Man City again? Um, listen, Jamie. I've, I've we all watched the World Cup and we were all very blown away. The, the, the most impressive thing about me is, I think certainly in the latter games for England, he took the fight to the opposition, and he, he alongside his ability goes a mental strength. I think. And looking from the outside, this kid takes a football pitch and said, "I'm going to take the game to you because I'm the best player on the pitch mm-hmm. in a, in a in a good way." Who wouldn't want to bring him to their football club? Now, mm. it's whether who can afford him, to be quite honest with you, because I'm sure they sat there as a commodity and thought the price of this boy's gone up through the roof after this World Cup as well, you know? Mm. So, yeah. <clears throat> all the best teams would want to bring him. I'd be surprised if they didn't, you know? And he would certainly, if you're looking the like for like, um, you know, Henderson's drive that's been at Liverpool for, for so many years, it's probably been underrated a little bit. Yeah, definitely. He mm. He's at the back end of his, his time, potentially, at the club. Is Bellingham the, the new sort of Henderson as such? You know what I mean? Yeah, mm. yeah. no, I have to agree with you on that. Uh, Stuart, yeah. from an Aston Villa perspective, a couple of big results, Premier League, beating Man United at Villa Park and then winning away at Brighton. So on the, off the back of a couple of really important victories for the club. Yeah, as I say, the back end of uh, the first half of the season, they look as though they've sort of finished it really strongly. We all look from the outside, Cass, and say that that they've got some talent in their squad. You know what I mean? And and we were surprised they've started as badly as they did 
this season, if you like. But certainly they'll be going. They'll finish in the top half of the table. There's no doubt in my mind about that. It's just wearing the top half. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it's it's all up for grabs very much for for a lot of teams uh, yeah. to finish in and around those European places. Yeah, it's true. We've been we were talking about Coutinho this morning. Now, how, how Gerard put kind of all his uh, eggs in the <coughs> basket of getting the best out of him, and it didn't quite happen. Eli yeah. Emery comes in and maybe doesn't use him as much as, or is going to use him as much as we think. Um, how do you get the best out of a player like that who's been in the Premier League for many years? We all yeah. loved him, but then has become a different player. Yeah, it was sometimes that happens with age a little bit, you know. You know, he's gone away and then he's come back. And I, to be fair to him, I thought he'd done quite well and give Villa a real lift when he first come back in. So I think the first few months he was here, he, he had a good impact at the club and uh, he had that something special about himself, was getting goals and assists. But I think that's just waned a little bit. And you know what it's like, new manager comes in. If, if you don't actually fancy him and he don't play in the style that you want to play, probably the best thing for someone of easy ilk is yeah. to move on maybe and, and this January window has come maybe at the right time for him if he, he needs to go and get a challenge elsewhere and sure good Christmas enjoy yesterday and today you're working very nice mate you know I like my food pal you've been <laughs> privy to that over the, over the last few weeks in Qatar so yeah and I'm looking looking forward to get up the villa to uh, to watch this one I think it's a classic yeah right. Stu look before you go I've got to ask you you know you're heavily involved with West Ham and you've been in, around all the people there they've, they've got some diff- yep. difficult games they're a point above the drop zone and you know Moyes has, has, has got a tough job on his hands and he, he, he struggled at the start of this season how does he get the best out of this side now well, I think it's certainly the new players that have come through the door, uh, Jamie. You know, he's got, you know, seven or eight players that have come through the door that, that need to be bedded in a little bit. It's not been too helpful with one or two injuries that he's had. You know, Schumacher's has missed the odd game through injury. Agard was out for the best part of 10 weeks, you know, which was a real blow to him. But you know what it's like? You need to pick up a couple of results. Uh, tough one today, but it might be a good time to go to Arsenal, you know? You never know. So, yeah. Uh, listen, he's a good manager and a good technical coach, so there is absolutely no doubt that he'll get West Ham up the league. And I think what you've got to look at as well, this European campaign, uh, uh, it was tough for us last year, you know, playing Thursday, Sunday. I think this year, whilst he's maintained brilliant results in Europe, I think it's just been a little bit tough in the league, you know, returning. And the good thing is the European campaign's put to bed now until sort of, I think it's, it's February, March time, so he can concentrate yeah. more so and not have those Thursday, Sunday games. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Stu, enjoy your day. Cheers, Stuart. No, no, I Cheers, was Stuart. I was going to mention, because we're big specials fans and the loss of Terry Orr, and I know it would have, uh, Stuart, you, you, you like me, we both love our Scar music. Yeah, it was a real blow, mate. To be fair, there's, there's too many musicians, I think, you know, popping over at the other side at the moment and as I say, massive loss to music and a big surprise as well. I don't think two being people sort of outside his family probably knew that there was an illness or, or anything there, you know? So yeah. real blow. So sad for the family, mate. Stuart, Cheers, absolute Joe. pleasure. Thanks for coming Take on. Enjoy care, the James. game. Yeah, it will do. Bye bye. All right, Stuart Pierce there. That game is a Talk Sport exclusive five thirty, Aston Villa v Liverpool, presented by Adrian Durham. Commentary from Adam Bridge and former England defender Stuart Pierce. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from six AM on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.